Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the video. Pretty special video today. I'm excited. Can you tell? Today we are taking a look at the Kolhan 4.0 grand. It's 4 period 0 grand. The fourth generation of Kolhan's 0 grand. And we're going to go through some of the things that I like about the shoe, some of the differences, why I decided to buy a pair of Kolhan 0 grands again, and why this is a special shoe for me. So before we get into the video, I would just like to say thank you and express my gratitude to everyone that's been subscribing and commenting on my videos lately. I really do appreciate it. It does motivate me to make better videos for you guys, and it does motivate me to make videos to help you guys and actually answer some of you in the comments, try to give you my thoughts and opinions. I really appreciate it. The subscriber growth in this channel in the past few weeks has been just amazing. It really does warm my heart as sappy as that sounds. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. And if you like what you see, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you like the videos and like the community that we are all creating here in this YouTube space, consider subscribing, it's totally free. With that being said, advertisement over, back to the video. All right, so if anyone's not up to speed with my channel, about four years ago, I think it was around March or April of 2017, I made a video on the Kolhan Zero Grand Wingtip Oxford. Shoe that I have worn extensively. It is the Kolhan Zero Grand. Very similar color. It was a wingtip Oxford. It had this weird sole with a bunch of grooves in the bottom. That is the shoe that gave me the idea to actually start this channel. So I had that great idea and I started it. Four years later, here I am. And a great experience. So if you watch my previous videos, I made two of them on the Zero Grand. I made the first one and then I made a follow-up one. I had worn through two pairs of them but I decided I was gonna buy a third pair, but they kind of cheapened up the leather. Overall, the shoe kind of had a bit of an identity crisis. It was a little bit too much of a hybrid for me. It was dressy on top, it was sporty on the bottom, the color faded, I always wished it was a darker color on top. It was hard to wear with jeans and a t-shirt because it looked too dressy, but you couldn't really dress it up as much because it looked too casual. It was just kind of like, I had a hard time saying this shoe is this or this shoe is that. Also, it was a narrow shoe too. To make matters worse, I couldn't wear it with athletic socks or normal socks. You know, I, I had to always wear those thin cotton dress socks you'd actually wear with dress shoes. It was like that one final thing that annoyed me about it. Since then, I pretty much have just been resorting to wearing the Clark's Desert Boots. If it's summertime, I've got some other boots. In the fall and winter, I don't have any problems. I have plenty of higher boots that are more supportive. I'm covered there, but it's always been the summertime that I had a hard time finding a sneaker or a shoe that would looked good but was also comfortable. So also with that original Zero Grand, it had a lot of support, but it was also way too flexible. And it put a lot of pressure on the point right here of my foot, to the point where it just felt like my foot was constantly being folded in half and a lot of pressure points was on like the front part of my arch. Obviously that didn't bother me a lot because overall they were pretty comfortable, but I'd say 10% of the time that was my experience with those shoes. So that was the backstory of the original Kolhan Zero Grand. Now we're gonna talk about the 4.0 Grand or the fourth generation Zero Grand, why I like it, why I chose it, and just my overall opinions. Of course, if you know this channel, we're gonna do a pro and cons list and then my overall thoughts. Starting off with the pros. The very first pro is, if you know me, you know, if I buy something, I want to get as much use out of it as possible, and my buzzword is versatility. If I can't think of three or four scenarios to wear a shoe in or wear anything in, really, I don't want it. I do not like single-use products, really, when it comes to anything. My laptop, my camera, my watch, my bicycles, my car, my glasses. I always make sure I try to imagine myself and think about how am I going to be able to use this Really, this is just a tool that's going to perform a job of looking stylish and keeping me comfortable in most situations. I could picture myself wearing this with a nice pair of khaki shorts, polo shirt or linen shirt, a pair of jeans and a blazer, or sport coat rather. This is an actual sport coat. Or I could just wear it with jeans and a t-shirt. I could even take it up to a casual suit. I'm not one for wearing super casual shoes with a suit. I'd rather just wear dress shoes or dress boots, but you can do it. This one has a more understated look to it. When you look at this shoe, you can see it's a sneaker. It's a sneaker through and through. It looks like a sneaker, smells like a sneaker, walks and talks like a sneaker. So it's a sneaker through and through. It doesn't have any crazy grooves. It has a little bit of grooves. It has these perforated holes on top, which really are just gonna act the same as like the mesh and the Adidas Ultra Boost, gonna let air in. Not gonna be a problem if you're wearing them in the summertime and 
summertime is pretty much sneaker season anyway, but it's a sneaker and it's going to look equally at home as if you wear it with a jeans and a t-shirt or even shorts as if you would dress it up with a smart casual, kind of like what I've got on right now, blue sport coat, pair of jeans, linen or Oxford cloth button down shirt. These shoes have an open lacing system for the most part. It just means that this system right here is pretty wide and it's easier to just, it's easier to get a wide fit up here and a nice narrow fit around the heel. Whereas a closed lacing system, like on an actual dress shoe, you see how the laces kind of come to a point right there. It just creates that V right there. Here it's open. Now something like the Desert Boot, this is a true open lacing system. You see how the leather is kind of just opens up all the way like crazy like that. That makes these easier to fit wider with a better fit around your ankle and just a lot easier to wear with a lot of different types of socks. So the first generation zero grand wingtip Oxfords was a size 11 and a half. These are a size 11 and a half. They sometimes almost feel too big around here, but I am always able to tighten them up around the ankle to the point where it feels really good. I can wear them with no-show socks in the summertime. I can wear them with athletic socks. I wouldn't really want to wear them with dress socks. Dress socks I pretty much wear exclusively with dress shoes anyway, but it does feel like I have enough room for a thinner wool sock if I want to wear them in the fall and my feet get a little bit cold in the early fall, not the late fall that is. And that just adds to their versatility because with that first generation Zero Grand, because it was so narrow and I could only wear it with the dress socks, I couldn't really wear it with casual socks, wool socks, or even, you know, the, the no-show socks are basically casual socks, they're not thin. So I pretty much only wore the original Zero Grands to work with dress socks and work attire. I didn't really wear them casually that much. The other thing that's nice about this shoe is I've worn it a couple of times, but already I can feel it's very comfortable. It feels very well balanced as a shoe. Well balanced means it's not super flexible, it's not overly supportive, it's not super squishy. It has enough squish to the bottom, enough cushioning, it has enough support, and you see it is flexible, but it's not like I can bend it in half really easily. And that was another gripe that I had with the original Zero Grand wingtip Oxfords, the first generation rather. Cole Haan does have an original Grand. I'm not talking about the original Grand, I'm talking about the Zero Grand wingtip Oxfords, but they're the first generation that came out. That shoe, it just felt really supportive, but super flexible. Imagine you took a pair of shoes like the Adidas Ultra Boost, which has a lot of support, or a pair of Asics, and you pretty much just cut right here. That way the shoe was just free right here. That's pretty much how it felt. There was a whole bunch of support up here, but it put a lot of pressure on the front of your feet and your toes and the ball of your feet. It was okay, but there were a lot of times where I said uh, I could tell these, you know, it's hitting different pressure points. It, it wasn't really something that I was really happy about. So this Zero Grand 4th Generation Leather Sneaker feels like it has a lot more of a well-balanced comfort and fit to it. We talked about the rubber holes, the perforations. Those are going to be great in the summertime. They don't really, you don't really feel them a lot, but again, similar to if you buy a pair of running sneakers, you have that mesh on the top that's nice and breathable. If the breeze comes in, you can feel the breeze on your feet. Same type of thing. The holes get bigger on the outside right there. Holes get smaller up there. Uh, your feet are going to get wet, obviously, if it's summertime. However, this is personal preference. I don't really mind if my feet get wet in the summertime. These, you probably can't wear these in the wintertime with as much comfort. It's essentially gonna be the same as wearing a pair of running sneakers in the wintertime. But when it's cold out, your feet are gonna get really cold because that wind's gonna go right through the mesh upper, or in this case, right through the perforations. And also, one more thing. I kinda knew this because I had the experience with the old Zero Grands. Cole Haan uses a very hard-wearing rubber on the bottom of the shoes. Now with the first generation Zero Grand wingtip Oxfords, they had hard-wearing rubber on the back and on the top, or on the front rather. Here, it looks like you have it all through here. And this rubber, very hard. I wouldn't be surprised if I get at least a year or more out of heavy walking with these shoes. That, I'm really psyched about. This shoe was not cheap at $220 US. I'd rather pay a little bit more money for a shoe that looks better and sophisticated, but I know it's gonna last a lot longer versus a little bit more of a cheaper shoe that doesn't need as much maintenance, but it's gonna wear out a lot faster. Some of the things I'm not too fond about this sneaker or this shoe is it's not as streamlined of a sneaker as some of the other options out there. So some of the sneakers, it's almost like they took that old school classic Vans or Converse style, the flat sole, just the very minimal design, sort of like Ace Marks is doing it. Alan Edmonds has a couple of them. Thursday is even getting into the game. What's the 
one that everyone has, the white leather sneakers that everyone has that are really expensive. Not greats. Greats is another one. Common projects. Common projects. Very, very minimal, especially those white leather sneakers. Really minimal, really just no fuss at all. This one, a little bit more going on. Not as much going on as the first generation Zero Grand, but again, not as sleek and sophisticated as something more minimal. So that's one thing. I would prefer to see them kind of tone it down a little bit more just to get more use and wear them in more situations than when you have all this sporty looking stuff all over the shoe. Or, you know, like this back piece and this like colors and these laces. They could do a little bit better job than that. Talking about the bottom of the sole, I said it looks like it's going to be very hard wearing. You do see it's almost like that yellow, light brown, tan, I don't know what you call it, natural color rubber. It does detract from the look of the shoe a bit and the style. So if you see them from behind, again, it doesn't look as streamlined as stylish as if they just left it all white. Then again, they're kind of going for a balance between durability and being able to have the shoe last a lot longer and style. They just kind of had a good mixture with it. It doesn't overall look too bad, probably barely tell, but that is something that I wasn't too happy about and it is one of the cons that I would rate this shoe on. So now, and last but not least, I do wish the color was a little bit darker. I do have some brown shoe polish. I'm gonna to try to darken these shoes. I like that it has burnishing. Burnishing basically means that the shoe is darker at the toe, lighter back here. My other problem with my first generation Zero Grands was over time they lightened up and I couldn't really darken the leather that much. I don't know if they treated the leather with something, but I really wish that I could darken the leather. So hopefully these, I can darken them a little bit more because I think a little bit darker just kind of adds the versatility and makes them look a little bit more sophisticated and dressy and you can wear them in more situations than if they turn into like a light tan walnut type color. So overall, I am pretty satisfied with these shoes. The comfort is great. The versatility is great. Wore them a couple of times. I'm absolutely keeping them. I'm really happy that I finally found a pair of shoes that looks this good and is this comfortable because I've been searching for a while. I pretty much have resorted to wearing the Adidas Ultra Boost and the Clark Desert Boots, which is good. But now I feel really confident that if I only wanted to bring one pair of shoes with me to a long weekend, this could be it. It's gonna look good, it's gonna feel good, I don't have to worry about anything. I also like that it just fits better with jeans and a t-shirt and a more casual scenario. It's something that I always kind of lusted after with the first generation Zero Grand, so this is a very welcome change for me. That's the Kolham 4.0 Grand. As always, thanks so much for watching my videos. Appreciate it. Leave a comment if you like what I'm doing here. Consider subscribing if you enjoy the content I'm putting out here. Hope everyone has a great day, great week. Stay stylish, stay safe, and as always, have a good one, guys. Bye!